Hi everyone, and welcome to another early edition of our weekly Topical Deep Dives. And usually when we publish these videos ahead of our usual Thursday time slot, it's so we can highlight something shiny and new and share it with you as soon as possible. And that's definitely the case here as well. This week we're getting some up-close hands-on time with Sling TV's latest app. It's a revamped look and feel that's coming first to Fire TV users starting, well, today actually. And in this video we're going to go over what's new, what's changed, and more. So if you're already a Sling TV user, or maybe you've been curious about the service and you wanted to know what the company had planned, I highly recommend checking this video out. This is the Core Cutters News hands-on preview of the new Sling TV app. What's new with Sling TV? Okay, full disclosure right up front, Sling TV wanted to share what they've got cooking, so they sent over a custom Fire TV Stick 4K for us to check out for free. But as with all of our coverage, our opinions remain 100% our own. So with all of that being established, let's find out what we're dealing with here. So we started hearing about a new Sling TV update a few days ago when Fire TV users started noticing a message on their apps. The messaging promised a new, more personalized Sling TV experience would soon be on the way. And sure enough, we're here testing the new app on a Fire TV Stick 4K. So let's see what's new. What's it like to use the new Sling TV app? Okay, first off, let's do some level setting and take a look at what you might be used to seeing on the previous Sling TV app. So what you're seeing on your screen right now is that previous Sling TV app running on a Fire TV Stick 4K. You can see the large menu bar up top in a grid of content tiles that are all the same size. If you move over to the guide section, you see a grid that's predominantly gray and pretty text heavy, and you don't get a whole lot of info beyond the title of each show or movie. Okay, with that established, let's hop on over to the new Sling TV and see if we can spot any differences. And uh, spoiler alert, they're pretty easy to spot. But here we go. Okay, now you're looking at the new Sling TV app running on a different Fire TV Stick 4K. And the first thing that's immediately clear is that there's more screen real estate dedicated to actual content tiles. The home, guide, on demand, and other sections are pushed to the left side and minimized until you actively call upon them. As for the rest of the screen, we get some variation in the size of those content tiles, and I'm guessing the idea there is to add some visual variety while also drawing your attention to specific sections, like trending shows, your most watched channels, and more. Farther down on this new home screen, you'll see dedicated categories for sports, news, shows, movies, and kids programming. Click on each of them and content suggestions appear in a drop-down section below. For instance, click on the sports section or the news section and a new row of suggested content appears, including shows that are currently broadcasting live. Move over to shows and you'll get popular options like friends as well as other well-known options that are currently playing on some channel out there. The same goes for movies where you can see in this example that Kong Skull Island is currently playing over on TBS. The home section also highlights your most watched live channels which could make it easier and faster to return to your favorite shows. And scroll down the home menu a bit farther and you'll see your recent recordings and your watch list, which includes shows, movies, and other content that you've highlighted. The visual updates continue in other parts of the app as well. Head over to the left side menu bar and you can access sections for the live TV guide, your DVR recordings, and on-demand content. The guide section gets a significant visual overhaul. The same size gray grid is gone and in its place is a more colorful, dynamically reacting user interface. When you highlight a specific tile in the grid, it expands to show off more information as well as some thumbnail art. And yes, both the reactive animations and the inclusion of relevant artwork do go a long way toward improving the overall look of this section compared to the more rigid grid pattern of the previous app. And you also get recording options while browsing the guide, so you can mark a show to be recorded more easily. And the individual tiles end up being more pleasing to look at while also being more useful at the same time. Each channel has a heart icon next to it, making it pretty easy to add and remove them from your favorites list. And up top in the guide section are a number of ways to organize and sort through the various channels on offer, including an A to Z list, a favorites only view, recently watched channels, and more. For example, the sports view filters down to channels broadcasting sports programming, and a similar curation happens in the news, movies, and kids section. Head on over to the DVR section and you'll see your currently available recordings front and center, as well as the status bar showing how much space you have left. You'll also see sections for scheduled recordings and a place to dive deeper into your available DVR storage.
Over on the on-demand section, you'll see a menu of available content laid out in a manner similar to other sections of the app, with a variety of content tile sizes to help break up the visual monotony. Some of the larger tiles are clearly meant to grab your attention, but you'll also see other viewing options farther down, including themed rows for, say, Star Wars-related content or, say, Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month. And like other areas of the app, you also get options to narrow things down here, including subsections for your watch list, movies, TV shows, and kids programming. Meanwhile, the search section also gets a facelift as well. Results will constantly refresh and refine as you type, which is a change from how the previous app would sort of shuffle out displayed content tiles. It's more of a visual tweak, but the overall look is in keeping with the rest of the app update. A quick search of Jackie Chan movies gave us relevant currently available options. Meanwhile, searching for Stargate SG-1 led us to a list of upcoming episodes, which gave us the option to set recordings and add the show to our watch list. Overall then, it looks like Sling was going for a more modern and visually appealing look and feel when it came to developing this new app. And the company tells us more features are coming in future releases, so what we've gone over today is apparently just at the start. And as for when you can expect that new Sling TV app, let's go over that next. Which devices are getting the new Sling TV app, and when? Okay, so as of the recording of this video, we don't have quite as many concrete dates as we'd like, but we do have some details. First off, this new Sling TV app is set to debut for select Fire TV users starting today, May 25th, 2021. And the company expects the app to roll out to other compatible platforms throughout the year. Roku users in particular should start seeing the revamped Sling TV app sometime this summer. And of course, we'll continue to monitor the app's progress over on CoreCuttersNews.com and we'll update you as we learn more about the company's release plans. For now though, if you're a Fire TV user, keep an eye out as you might be among the first to check the app out starting today. Wrapping it all up. And so there you go, that was our hands-on preview of the new Sling TV app for Fire TV. And of course, thank you all for tuning in this week. And naturally, I'm going to ask all you Sling TV users out there what you think so far. Do you think this new app addresses any concerns or issues you had with earlier versions? Are there any new features or capabilities you're looking forward to trying out? Let us know. And for anyone that's been considering Sling TV but hasn't quite committed, did anything you saw here help you make up your mind one way or another? Feel free to sound off in the comment section down below. And don't forget to check out our other Sling TV app launch coverage over at corecuttersnews.com. And of course, please do take a moment to click the like button down below and maybe even consider following Core Cutters News. We'd certainly appreciate it and you'd be joining an awesome community of fellow core cutters and streamers. For now though, my name is Philip Palermo. Thanks again for tuning in and we'll see you all next week. Take care.